So here you already see the finished product and what I'm going to show you in the video is a mod for the button and a little repaint. The result is that these two buttons are pretty much useless now because obviously we moved the button to the um, slider part to be on the actual button you see there. The only piece you need to replace is a small screw that holds the button but um, in my case the screw was a little bit too short so I can't use the button cover. I can use it as an actual cover but not use it and make the sonic buzz. And that uh, was um, intended. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it was. I, I planned that. So yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it's much darker now, and yes, I do know it's not as it is on the show. But um, well, it's up to you what color you use. So now I'm going to show you what you need to do. There was the screw with the button from the slider, and I taped the um, battery um, compartment shut already. But so I can remove it again and you have to dismantle the thing only as far as you need to when you want to change the batteries. So you don't need to take the silver ring off, you don't need a Dremel or anything. You just have to take it apart like this. So um, what you need is another screw actually for um, the small button, but I'm going to show this later. We now want to use the button tease of this button to push down the actual sonic button in the slider while being within the slider. So um, he has this easy little tease that hold it in place in this um, slit. So um, we are going to use this. But um, the screw that comes with it is too long so you have to take another screw. You have to find it. I took it from my um, River Song Sonic the one that goes into the battery compartment. And the worst thing is that you have to put a little hole in there and it's really bad position because it's right on the, um, on the uh, corner of the battery compartment. You have to make sure that nothing is underneath, no wiring, not the button, not anything. You have to take the um, lid off and make sure that there's nothing in there. You have to make sure you see how far you can go in there. And then you have to make that hole. And this is a really scary part. So plan ahead, try it out, have a look at it, and then see if it works. So how it was positioned until now is there where you see the hole, there was a slider button. We now, uh, you see the two buttons and the black button where it was originally. And now we want to turn it 90 degrees so that the actual button is underneath the slider. Next step, you heat up your paper clip and fuse in a little hole next to the button as shown before. So I'm now going to show you how this should look like um, when you made your hole. Don't make it too big, make it rather smaller than bigger so the screw can fit in and can hold in place. Of course you have to put it in first into the body before you screw it on. But this is how it should basically look like. Well, if you liked it so far, give it a thumbs up and go visit um, those other channels I got the ideas from because this was not my idea. I just used um, Intel from other um, videos to try my own version. And um, if you want to see how I painted it and how I did it without dismantling it, um, keep watching. On to the painting. So, what you need is stuff to paint, of course, some containers, paintbrushes, and some tape to um, tape parts off. A little bit of water, but really just a little bit. Um, primer, whatever you can find. You send down the body a little bit. You see there it's not shiny, there it is shiny. We only want to um, send it down so far that the paint can hold on to something and not further. After that you just brush off the dust and you can go and prime it. It's always useful to have a wet cloth or something underneath so the dust doesn't go everywhere and it's easier to just get rid of the dust. So the next thing to think about was what 
colors to use um, and uh, I didn't have that many but it was hard to just come up with what I wanted it to look like so um, basically yeah find out what you want and do it I just I didn't know what to do actually I just knew I had to use the blue for the button part this is the old button part but um, yeah I wanted to give it a dry brush in the end so it really looked like metallic and used like where it was used a lot at the handle of course so I tried to go for that and this basically is the finished part when I was done painting it and you see the cracks are really nice and visible that's because I used the dry brush technique I used the blue for the buttons parts and um, you see that the um, um, part that are further in to the body are darker and this is a look I really liked I then used this um, varnish to just finish it off and then took off the tape and as you see shiny worked well and it was really fun and easy to do and with, with the hairdryer it really was it took no time when I was dry brushing the body I thought okay well the shiny bits of the other parts of the screwdriver looked too shiny and too clean so I gave it a little dry brush as well and made it look more used and I'm really happy with the results so if you like it too cool <laughs> try it you can use other colors I use gunmetal this now is the final product and here you see it in all its shininess and I took this video on the other day in the morning when it was really sunny so the colors seem a little bit different but it really depends on the, uh, the light so you can compare it to the blue bulb there because you know what color that is and yeah I am really happy with it the button to, for protection kind of now um, yeah it still works slides out and in very well there's no problem with it whatsoever and um, yeah I like how it looks and it still works love that click by the way do you have ideas what to do about the ink nib to put in there something else I don't know a USB drive or something useful um, let me know in the comments please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and come back when I dismantle River Song's future sonic screwdriver to um, replace the broken speaker. Bye!